All right, greetings, my friends. We have come together for the ultimate fireside chat. Thank you to all those who have prayed our ordination novena. Tomorrow morning is the ordination. This is exciting. We are here today for the rehearsals, and I had a brief moment to steal away all four gentlemen to be ordained tomorrow. So, uh, from sort of my left to right, your right to left. Anyways, uh, let's see. Let's introduce. You all remember Mark Martin, who was our summer intern last year. You are about to become a transitional deacon. Woo! Maybe new to uh, your area, as we, he hasn't exactly served in the East Lansing area before, John Benton. Transitional deacon, like uh, Deacon Mike, who is going to be Father John as of tomorrow morning. So we're very excited for that. Uh, deacon John has been serving, uh, serving in my former parish assignment as a weekend ministry and diaconing in, yeah. in Flushing and Montrose. So uh, he has been a godsend to them. You're all very familiar with Deacon Mike. He's really kind of here as a placeholder. You've already heard his story before. <laughs> we're just going to skip over him, Everybody, right? Everyone's yeah. tired of me. And no, 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 we love you, but we're going to skip over him because we're going to hear everybody else's story before we get cut off and they grab them back for more rehearsals. And again, our local East Lansing seminarian, Miguel Colunga, we haven't gotten to see much because the poor guy's in seminary. And uh, anyway, so we're grateful to have him. He's going to be ordained a transitional deacon tomorrow. Let's just say a little bit, and especially, like, obviously, like, we've heard a little bit about uh, Deacon Mike's story and his background and, and coming into the faith and all of that. But for the rest of you that we haven't maybe had a chance to catch up, what's your backstory? Large family, small family, uh, Cradle Catholic, not cradle Catholic, uh, maybe just want to say a few things. Do you want to kick it off, Mark? I'll do it. All right, let's do it. So, yeah, my name is Mark Martin. I grew up in uh, North Adams, Michigan, which is a tiny town just outside of Hillsdale. That's better, Hillsdale. So, yeah. Everyone's heard of Hillsdale, so that's where, where we'll say I'm from. Uh, boy, let's see, I have two brothers and one sister. I am the oldest, so I'm head honcho. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, not a cradle Catholic. I uh, was raised a Mormon, actually, and I became Catholic when I was 16. So that was 2009. I was baptized and confirmed. And uh, yeah, I'm just very grateful to be here now. Blessings on you. Deacon John, what's your family of origin story in brief? Well,. I was born way, uh, let's see. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, no, okay, there it is. Yes. Came down, beam. Uh, no, I'm from Brighton. <laughs> a mystical and wonderful yes. land called Brighton. Brighton. I'm 27 years old. I'm the oldest. I have a brother and sister. Grew up Catholic. Uh, went to Catholic schools uh, down in Ann Arbor. Uh, it's run by the Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. It's a great Catholic school. And I think my vocation kind of started there when I was young and just growing in my faith was always kind of open to being a priest. Went to Catholic high school, uh, finally decided to, that I wanted to go to seminary when I was going to my senior year of high school. Looked at the seminary, uh, visited, signed up. Here I am. Here are nine some. years later. Yeah, nine years so. later. <laughs> Deacon Mike, Still you the been oldest? been in Catholic school for, since I was five, so, <laughs> but I'm done. I graduated. <laughs> 25 years of school later. I know. You poor kid. You poor kid. Deacon Mike, are you the oldest? I am, yeah, because, because the, these guys are, are abnormally young for how long they've been in seminary. And Mark came right out of undergrad. Yeah. So I'm only 31. I don't feel that old, but yeah, I'm the oldest. There we go. We have, uh, this is it, Trailblazers. Okay, Miguel, oldest in the family? No, I'm the youngest. Okay, there we go. Thanks for shaking it up. Tell yeah. us a little bit about your family of origin. What does that look like? Yeah, sure. So, uh, Miguel, 25 years old, and uh, my family, they were parishioners here at St. Thomas for about 20 years, 20 so years. And uh, they all they are all originally from Mexico. And uh, actually, and I have two older sisters, too. And actually, my oldest sister, Sarah, she just had her first child. Uh, so, yes, Uncle Grant. Yes. And uh, did yeah. You do the baptism now. I did, I did. See, she asked me uh, about a week ago <laughs> to do it. So, uh, it's kind cool. of exciting. I know, right? Because awesome. I can do baptism now. Wow. Yes. Oh, after tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, yes, after and, tomorrow. And, um, 
but yeah, yeah, yeah. So two <laughs> sisters and uh, yep, spoiled one of the family, being the youngest. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, and um, yeah, folks all over the place. Uh, folks, my my parents are actually out in North Carolina. They're driving in, so we're really excited. Oh, safe travels. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see them come in. And uh, but yeah, it's a little bit about me. Amen. Amen. No, he's uh, he's the local boy. Done good. And uh, we're very proud. Now, maybe just to say a few things about vocations. Uh, Deacon John, you said a little bit about just Catholic schools all the way. But, you know, in terms of that discernment or someone who is an influence, or maybe especially as, as we think that, you know, we are in a student-laden community, something that helped you to discern, something that helped you to say yes. Uh, if you all have something to share that might just be helpful, especially to those in our neighborhood who are, your age or younger are still trying to figure out what the call of the Lord is, something that helped, maybe just something to share along the way. Anybody like? I'll go for it. To kick it off. Yeah. Uh, boy, let's see. You know, for me, my call to the priesthood, that sense of call came right when I was being confirmed because I chose St. John Vianney as my confirmation oh, saying. Nice. <laughs> and Ancient of diocesan priests, very good. I, uh, I felt drawn to him because of kind of his life and how heroic he was. Just to say a little bit about him, he went into a parish that was like decimated because of the French Revolution. And he just kind of set about doing the ordinary work of a priest. I mean, he did a lot of heroic penance and the devil really attacked him. He's got these crazy stories of the devil like shaking his bed at night or lighting it on fire while he was in it. <laughs> and I just remember thinking like, I was very drawn to his heroic life. Like he just like cared for these people. And, um, and that was kind of the start of the sense of a vocation. And the thing for me is that it wouldn't go away. <laughs> I tried to run from it. I went to Oakland University uh, wanted to be a doctor, like a medical doctor, and no matter what, that was what was going to happen. But the sense of a desire to be a priest, or this wondering, like maybe God's calling me, just wouldn't go away no matter what I did. And uh, it kind of came to the point where I needed, it was like I needed to look at this, or I was afraid I was going to be on my deathbed, and I spent my whole life wondering, like maybe I should have been a priest. So. I like it. Deacon John, in addition to Catholic schools and all the other vocations and probably getting to know your other parish priests and other influences, something that helped you to discern, uh, clarify the way? Uh, I think um, you, when you're thinking about your vocation, you can, you can kind of focus a lot on what does God want me to do and what, is he, what should I do? And sometimes that can, that, that's distracted me from kind of the primary thing of just being in a relationship with him and just enjoying being a child of God, which I think is it, it is the most important thing. And if you're really living in that rootedness of God's love, uh, the vocation thing will make itself clear to you. And the other thing is um, a lot of people these days are afraid of commitment. And I would say just try to combat that fear and don't be afraid to take steps in the way you think God might be leading you and take an active role. So oh, I like that. We've already gotten to talk a little bit with Deacon Mike. Any last comments as far as you are on the verge of becoming Father Mike? Any uh, last uh, discernment in advice to your peers or younger? Yeah, I mean, it helps to discern to grow in holiness to the extent that you can. So I was told, again, by your classmate, Father McMorrow, Oh. Work with St. Vincent de Paul Society, oh, so yeah. I went and did home visits. So work with the poor yeah. and pray in front of the Eucharist. And that's so that's good. Uh, that was really helpful in my own dis decision <laughs> to, to, to make, take the next step. So that's what I say. Work with the poor, pray in front of the Eucharist. I like it. Everyone's had a different story. What are you thinking, Miguel? What would be helpful uh, just from your journey to share for uh, your oh. peers? Oh, definitely. You know, just uh, being a witness to like the workings of the Lord. My, like my story, like how everything, uh, how I got on the path to priesthood and the seminary. All I'm so grateful to my parents. Yeah. Like they were faithful, devoted Catholics, and they uh, they were always praying the Rosary every night. You know, they carried on that huge uh, culture devotion to Our Lady Guadalupe uh, that they carried on from Mexico, and they instilled that in us and value of the Catholic faith and. 
even though me as a kid, I you know was fighting back. I, I don't want I don't want anything to do with religion. Uh, but they were they were there. They were making sure that it was in me, and it was a value in me. I'm still I'm so grateful, uh, especially on high school. On one year, uh, my freshman year of high school, there I had to get confirmed. I wasn't yet confirmed, and they were pushing me to go on a retreat with a youth group here at St. Thomas. I got a retreat just before confirmation, and I was saying no, I was digging my heels in, and, but they were pushing me for yes, and the Lord started working, and that set me on a path where I got to really fall in love with the Lord and uh, encounter Him in a deeper way, and uh, I just discovered a different world. You know, a world in which like God had a story for me, a plan, uh, and, and he was leading me on there and all the prayer and, and so it's just beautiful like reflecting back on it, especially like now, like on the cusp of it, you know, of like ordination, like seven years, like oh, oh my gosh, like where is this? All, all, it all started from my parents, you know, just like that one act and them leading me and all of a sudden just like God just took it and now, now, I'm, now I'm here. It's kind of, it's hard to believe but I'm really grateful and I just see now like God just working in my life and when I didn't think about it before at all, yeah. like in high school, and now I'm here about to give my life to the Lord. And it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. It is an amazing journey. And again, and, and it's a journey of love, right? As you come to know how much God loves you, the response, however we give our lives back to the Lord, different gifts, different missions. Uh, but that, you're right, it, 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 perfect love casts out all fear. What a marvelous story. Uh, let's just think, we've got to wrap this up a little bit too. For all those who are not able to, uh, you know, attend obviously the ordination tomorrow, it will be on the diocesan live stream. If you hit the diocesan website, dioceseoflancing.org, there's a whole page. How do you find it on YouTube? How do you find it on Facebook? You can watch it either concurrently as it happens, or again to see the recording of it later. But um, where are you going to be from here on? As far as you know, where will people look for you? Where will they find you? What is your next step after ordination? What's your uh, summer assignment uh, before you have to go? For the transitional deacons, one more year of seminary. One more year. So you've got to go back in the fall. Yes. If there is a college going back in the fall. <laughs> Question mark on that. Okay, what, what's, the, uh, what's the summer assignment? Yeah, so I will be with Father Dan Kogut in Pinckney, Michigan. So uh, I would say Mary's actually Deacon Mike. That's was, why that's where I serve the yeah, as a deacon. Yeah, so I was I'll be there for the summer and I'll go back there on Sundays during the school year. Uh, and actually this Sunday I'm gonna preach my first homily back at my home parish, St. Anthony's in Hillsdale. Proud of you. What's the next assignment to soon to be father? I'm father gonna John. be at uh, St. Francis of Assisi in Ann Arbor. So I think there's another school down there. It's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> That is uh, Deacon Mike's home parish. Right? I know. <laughs> and, and he must be talking about Eastern Michigan, just down yes. Boston, not over where I attend. You know that other school with green and white colors? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Eastern. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. The, green, the first thing you think of when you hear green and white, right? <laughs> I, I might be thinking of something else. All right, that's right. Okay. We'll continue. Okay. <laughs> Here? Here. <laughs> yeah, say it and, and own it. I am about to be the associate. The associate at St. Thomas. Which I've been here, which is overwhelming because I've been here for like a month, maybe two exactly. months. And I just found like another wing of this building. A whole pocket full of people who work here that I had never <laughs> just, Like Diane works here, you know? <laughs> she does work here. We haven't she even shown him the here. tunnel yet. Wait till he sees the tunnel. He is going to be so jazzed about that. But yes, it's a whole new world. A new exciting point of view. We have a few more things to teach him, obviously. That'll be great. But we look forward to it. The poor kid almost gets gypped from the first mass experiences, you're going to do a uh, first mass back at your home Saint, parish, St. Francis. St. Francis yeah. of Assisi, Ann Arbor. But uh, in terms of that, since he's in residence here, we're just going to start baking him into the schedule. So there will be, actually be a lot of opportunities just to see him at weekday and weekend masses. He has sort of a, so a soft introduction yes, yes. to the neighborhood. We're going to throw him into the schedule immediately. So you're <laughs> going to see lots of him. God bless him. So uh, anyways, Miguel, what are, what's what's your summer assignment? I am gonna be I'm at I'm gonna be at a Creek Array in Lansing. Yes, with yeah. Father Vince. Father on Vince, the South Side. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and so I uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, just like Mark said, Mark uh, said he's preaching the first homily. I'm gonna be preaching there too, and uh, just looking forward to meeting more people as uh, uh, the churches keep. Reopening what, are you, what are you preaching in? Which languages? Uh, oh, English and Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm putting the skills to work. There we go. <laughs> wow. 
Well, congratulations to you all. I'm thrilled, and what a perfect weekend again as you are newly ordained and get to preach this weekend, Corpus Christi. You get to preach on the Eucharist, uh, which is the source and summit of our faith. What a beautiful thing to come together. Uh, let's say a quick prayer for them. And again, just in your hearts, pray for them and for their ongoing mission. Again, like for those who get married and for all vocations in life, this is the starting line. This is not the finish line. Obviously, it's the end of a lot of formation for some of you. But uh, truly, uh, there is so much to come in the Lord's name. And so we'll pray quickly. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we call down your spirit, your blessings upon these men who have given their lives for the church to be instruments of Jesus Christ. We pray your blessings upon them uh, as they are ordained tomorrow and for all their future ministry. Preserve them in their vocations, defend them from all evil, fill them with all the graces for their mission, that others may see Christ in them, they may draw all to salvation, and truly be a blessing to all the ministries and parishes they serve in the future uh, throughout the diocese. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. May yeah. Almighty God bless and keep you, gentlemen, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Thank you again for joining us for all of our fireside chats. This, again, is a starting line, not the finish line. You will see these faces across the diocese uh, for years to come, we pray. So uh, blessings on you and your ministry. Thank you for taking the time out of a very busy day for you. I'm, you can just hear how fast I'm talking. I'm just waiting like they're going to grab them any second for the uh, rehearsals. And we're more grateful that we were able to get even a few minutes with them briefly. But we hope this is not the last time we get to talk with you and uh, get to hear how things are going. So blessings on you. We'll let you get back to uh, the rehearsals. And thank you again, my friends, for joining us. Thanks, Father Gordon. Thanks, Father Gordon. Hey, blessings. <laughs>